Hey everybody, welcome back to Slavic Saturday, where we talk about Slavic history, mythology, and folklore. My name is Brendan Noble, author of the Frostmark Chronicles, which is my fantasy series based on Slavic mythology. This week, we're returning to gods with a goddess who I thought would be relevant on international the week of International Women's Day, and that would be Dijavana, or Divana, who is the goddess of the wilds and hunt. Before I dive too far into Jivana, though, I just wanted to remind you that the first book in the Frostmark Chronicles called A Dagger in the Winds is coming out very soon in June, and the, we're approaching the cover reveal in May. If you'd like to be one of the first people to receive the cover and see what the, some of the excerpts from the book are, check out my newsletter down in the description below. It gets sent out once a month, and you get early access to many of those things. But now, let's dive into talking more about Jivana. When it comes to gods and goddesses in Slavic mythology, Jivana has to be considered the, either the most rebellious or at least one of the most rebellious goddesses, especially. Compared to her mother, Mokosh, who is the great mother and goddess of women, who is kind of represents much more of the traditional role of a woman in, Slav in kind of early Slavic thought, Jivana takes a very different role has a little bit of the rebellious daughter. She's the daughter of, again, Markosh and Perun, who is the god of thunder, justice, and war, who is also really meant to represent order a lot in Slavic mythology, which puts her, again, as a major contrasting figure. She's also part of a lot of the other major characters that appear in Slavic mythology, such as being the sister of Marzana, who is the goddess of winter, pestilence, and death, as well as in some regions or variations being the sister as well of Eurillo, who is the god of spring, agriculture, and war, and also potentially being either a regional variant of or being the sister of Zivia or Vesna, which, who are the goddesses of spring and life, depending on regions. So Jivana takes a role as this independent free spirit riding a mare, which is a very big symbol of her as a female horse. And she would ride through the wilds and kind of try to defy her father as a huntress, as taking up roles that women really weren't meant to take up. And she decided that she also should be the ruler, not just over the gods, but also of all of the three realms in Slavic mythology, at least in some contexts of Pravya, Yavya, and Navya, or Prav, Yav, and Nav, which is the realm of the gods, the realm of the living, and the realm of the dead, which overall, she, it was considered Perun, who, her father, or Svarag, who would be her grandfather, uh, was ruling depending on the regional variations and she but but she believes she should rule it and so she defied particularly in the story we'll talk about here Perun and she fought against her father now there are things that are said to lead up to this such as the fact that she would wear her hair down instead of braided which referenced the fact that she would refuse to be married particularly not be married to whoever Perun wanted to marry her to and in general her unrestrained femininity really was something that Perun did not like and so he wanted to control her da his daughter which also led to this kind of rebellion but so Jivana uh, fought Perun in her the deep wilds which are her territory she's often pictured again riding this mare with either a spear or bow and arrow and with a wolf or a fox by her side and she charges into battle against Perun with these animals but Perun defeats them easily and eventually defeats her as the more powerful of the pair but because gods like demons in Slavic mythology are often shapeshifters, this starts up a battle of shapeshifting between the two because Jivana often is also meant to show her wit. And so she thinks she can outsmart Perun by transforming herself into a lioness after Perun manages to overpower her. But Perun matches her, changing himself into a lion and defeating her again. So she transforms herself into a bird and takes away to try to escape. But Perun's not going to let her get away, and he transforms into an eagle and catches her in his talons. But she's not done yet, and she transforms herself into a fish and tries to slip free from his talons. And she succeeds, f f dropping down to the ocean. But Perun calls out to Makosh, again his wife, who catches her in a fisher's net and stops Jivana from escaping. So it was kind of this interesting con uh, contrast of 
Giovanna having been an independent spirit here by herself, and Perun working with his wife in this traditional kind of role and catching her and stopping her from escaping, revolting, and fighting. And as punishment, Perun decides to marry Giovanna to Velus, the god of the underworld cattle and lowlands, but also interestingly, Velus is Perun's rival. So maybe this was an attempt to make peace or something, or maybe he just wanted to get rid of her. Who knows? But he marries Giovanna to Velus, and she doesn't like this at first, and Giovanna and Velus fight. She's down in the underworld with Velus. But it's kind of interesting because in some ways, though Giovanna is this independent spirit and she's meant to be untamed, she has a lot of similarities to Velus. And they both have elements over nature that we'll talk about in a little bit. As well as, like I said, Perun often represents, represents order in Slavic mythology. Velus and Giovanna kind of represent chaos or change, not necessarily in a negative context, context, but just this aspect of changing things, such as the wilds being always untamable and ever constantly in motion. And so there's this kind of interesting similarity between them, and in the end, Velus manages, after some attempts to, to, to woo Jivan, or at least make her not hate him by changing himself into a basil flower, and in the end they become kind of allies. There's not two in-depth stories about this. What's considered that the two of them are no longer completely against each other, so Velus and Giovanna are kind of allies over nature. So in Slavic mythology, there's a lot of different regional variation over nature gods and goddesses. There's spirits, there's gods, there's protectors of certain areas like Leshy, and so nature can be a really complex thing over whose role it is. Giovanna, though, is meant to kind of represent and control the untamed wilds, the part farther from villages and cities that people had no control over. While perhaps Urillo represented more of the agriculture, Velus might represent similar things to her or in some regions closer nature as well. And Zivia or Vesna often really represented that closer nature that was less dangerous because Giovanna's wilds could be dangerous. Again, this is regional and a lot of those could be a lot of overlap and differences between regions. I'm just trying to see how they can all relate together. This all becomes really muddled when the fact that Giovanna is the sister of Marzana, sometimes considered the twin of Marzana depending on the story. And as Marzana's opposite, she or whatever spring deity comes about, again, this changes by region and sometimes even regions where there's the singular spring god, god or goddess or multiple of them. But they all take up a similar role here as being the counterpart to Marzana, where they kill Marzana in the spring, Marzana being the goddess of winter and ushering in the spring and the life that comes with it. And then in autumn, they are killed by Marzana and go to Navia, which is the underworld, which could form an interesting story of Giovanna being the wife of Velus, perhaps, that she goes to Velus in the winter and comes back in the spring. Giovanna can come with Yarillo sometimes, who Yarillo being the former lover of Marzana, and who's trying to get revenge on Yarillo for cheating on her uh, when they were married. And in that case, it would be Yarillo often being killed but Giovanna comes around with Urillo to represent kind of the spring version of his power. So there's different contexts of that story, and you can see why it can get a little bit complicated because of the regional variations and the lack of primary sources. And in modern times, this role kind of gets extrapolated a little bit with her being the rebellious, but also the goddess, but also the goddess over the wilds. As her, in modern day, feminism often takes up a... Uh, Giovanna as a representative in Slavic mythology with her being a little bit more of the wild goddess and the defying of the traditional role of women with her mother being the more traditional aspect of being the wife and the mother of the many many of the gods and goddesses in Slavic mythology while Giovanna kind of breaks apart from that and so it's kind of an interesting perception that has taken place in more modern interpretations and uh, art around Slavic mythology. So Giovanna is typically appears as a young maiden as with gold or brown hair. She also tends to have either wolves or foxes by her side. She can be wearing either a felt, uh, pelt of either of those animals or of the bear, which is a reference to her 
husband being Velas and being an ally of him. She's often pictured as well with either antlers or a crown of antlers representing her control over both the wilds and being the goddess of the hunt and game with that aspect. And because of that as well, she's pictured either with a bow or a spear, both for hunting with. And this can make her a little bit more of an aggressive goddess compared to many of the other ones we talk about, such as Malkosh or Zivia, who tend to be seen as more friendly. That being said, Giovanna tends to be appear as friendly to humans in general, particularly women. So my series, The Frostmark Chronicles, takes a lot more from Western Slavic mythology, though it does have some Eastern elements in it as well. Giovanna, being a mostly Polish goddess, plays a pretty important role, especially as she is the kind of goddess that Otilia, one of our point of view characters, follows as a kind of a sorceress who channels Giovanna's power. And Giovanna being a representative of the opposite still of Marzana as the goddess of winter plays an important role as our, the first book in the series, A Dagger in the Winds, takes place around that turn of the spring equinox and the conflict between these two goddesses. And Otilia noticing that things are not going correctly around the spring equinox. Otilia's personality also draws a lot from Giovanna, being a very independent spirit, but also being kind of witty and determined. And she is, likes to accomplish things doing it by herself and doing it her own way. But the interesting thing is in the story, she can't do that because she's reliant on her goddesses. And not just that, if she's going to stop Marzana in the plot that Marzana is enacting throughout the story, she's going to need some other people's help. And Otilia, like Giovanna, doesn't tend to like that. And that's all I have for you today on this Slavic Saturday video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. I come out with them every Saturday.